Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. We talk about horror movies on this show. And in this episode we are discussing a new horror film, a new horror comedy by the name of Slice. It's a pizza themed horror comedy, which means it's basically made just for Tim because he's pizza obsessed. <laughs> if, if we got like a horror movie like set around a goat, yeah, I guess The Witch kind of counts. Uh, I feel like a lot of times people will use goats as like a set dressing. Uh, the witch definitely, you know, was one of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. So, yeah, so we'll start spoiler free as we always do, and then we'll we'll, we'll warn you before we dive into spoilers beforehand. I I was looking forward to checking this one out because the trailer was was pretty cool. The trailer was interesting. It set up this very specific tone, lots of synth, lots of sort of cheesy kinda kinda characters. It was like, oh, this is a story about a werewolf, a ghost, and a witch, and it's like, okay, what's 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 going on with this movie? Uh Zazie Beats is in this. She was of course in Deadpool 2 earlier this year, so I knew her from that. Um and there's a couple of recognizable faces popping up in it. Uh Dude from Stranger Things, uh Steve. Your favourite character, your spirit animal. Steve Harrington, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's great. Uh, but he's not, he's, he's only half of them. Dustin wasn't here, so it wasn't the complete package that yeah, makes Steve so true. good. So I think that's worth mentioning. But yeah, so, so they're in this, and the premise of this one is that there is someone murdering pizza delivery drivers. And hmm. more to the point, in the, the world of this movie, ghosts are a thing that just kind of exist, and ghosts like have their own section of town. It's kind of like Chinatown, but it's called Ghost Town. And that's where all the ghosts live. And all the deaths keep happening in Ghost Town. And that's like a plot point of the movie. Uh, <laughs> and the lead suspect is this werewolf character who comes back to town because there was similar murders for, for Chinese delivery people like years ago. And there's that going on. And Zazie Beats used to work at the pizza place and she like goes back to the pizza place because she wants revenge because her boyfriend was the first victim. And there's also a reporter going around trying to investigate the crimes and what's going on. And then meanwhile, there's the detective story of the detective trying to track down the killer. And these are all the things that are going on in the movie. Oh, and there's also like a weird ghost human rights group that are constantly causing trouble with the mayor. <laughs> so that's all the things that are going on. That's the basic gist of the premise across all the plot threads as the beginning. So I'll ask the question that I always do. Tim. Yeah. Did you enjoy Slice? Uh, so, like you said, um, you know, it had a pretty good trailer, and there's a lot of stuff that felt like it was catering to me. Like, uh, I, I love pizza, like you mentioned. Um, you know, there's a lot of, like, cool kind of, like, alternative comedy people in it that I like. Like, uh, I like Paul Shear a lot, um, and uh, Hannibal Burris is in it, but it's really just for, like, a second. But then, uh, other mm -hmm. than that, though, you know, a lot of the cast is really good, and it had me excited. Uh, but... Man, when I watched it, uh, this is god awful. Like this is <laughs> like <laughs> like e even all the stuff that I thought was like, oh man, this is like gonna be like right up my alley. Like it it, it was horrendous. Um, <laughs> and it, it's uh, I I to the point I almost thought it was like unwatchable. This movie is such a mess. And like I heard kind of people saying like, oh, it's surprising they're just kind of throwing this out there. It's not really getting like a big theater release or anything and it's like well no mm. wonder like a24 put this out for some god reason yeah it's but weird a you can a tell they're trying to bury it <laughs> yeah a24 typically is like the, you know the the, the the this little studio this little distributor who are usually have a reputation for having really good movies even if they're not always movies you like they may not be to your taste they always seem to pick these really great little indie movies and put them out there um yeah, actually, I, I wasn't sure how you were going to feel about it, because I, I <laughs> and this is the funny thing, is I started off watching the movie, and I'm like, okay, this is, like, I really look forward to this, this is right up, right up my alley, and I'm watching the movie, and things are starting, and I'm like, okay, all right, okay, this is just getting into the groove of it, but the, the, the more it went, the more I realized it just wasn't that good, like, you know, things were just yeah. falling flat, it wasn't funny when it was supposed to be funny, and the direction felt very bland, Joe, you know, it's actually worse than this, but Joe, you know it reminds me of the, the feeling I got. I think you even hate it more than I do. I, I don't know if I'd even say I hate it so much, as I just think it's really, really mediocre and boring. But uh, do you remember Beyond the Gates? I think that's what it was called. We did this in the, in the show. Uh, yeah, like the VHS video. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I got a very similar feeling to, to that, where it was like, 
I love what this is trying to do. I love what it's aiming for, and I love the style that it's trying to like sort of evoke. But ultimately, like, it just never hits it. Like, it's it's, it's trying really hard, but it's never as funny as it should be. And then another problem I had is is the weird thing where I never really feel like I got to know any of the characters, or there was one that was like, that's my main character, that's the one that I'm latched onto. We were jumping around every plot thread like equally throughout the whole movie that I never really got to like connect to anyone or care. But I see well I, I would kind of disagree with what you said like i mean, well obviously your opinion is, you know is your own but like i i thought it'd be good like i could but i could never feel like that i got a sense for what the movie was trying to be because it feels like it's trying to be like 80 different things even when you're explaining the plot that's like there's so much different stuff going on oh sure and it doesn't really ever feel connected like it felt like this was like the pitch for a you know 10 episode season like netflix show or something that they just decided to cram into the movie because everything is so over the place there's all these different characters but they never feel like they actually come together and really that they matter in each other's life and then yeah sometimes it seems like it's going for like this kind of you know irrelevant humor sometimes it seems like it's trying to be a little serious and like sometimes it seems like it's trying to be cool and sometimes it seems like it's trying to actually have a message like you know with like oh like the you know ghost uh, being segregated into this part of town and stuff but everything falls flat it's so one note there's no subtlety to anything it's just <laughs> super bloated and it, I, I just i think it's absolute garbage i was really pissed off actually watching this movie whoa whoa <laughs> All right, Tim, let's but... put on the brakes. Let's, let's take a step back here. <laughs> right. First of all, when I said I could see what it was trying to do and I love what it's trying to be, I wasn't so much talking about the plot. I was talking about the use of music. I was talking about the, the, the tone that it was going for, the, the sense of humor that it was trying to evoke as, as it was going through. The plot is probably the biggest problem in the entire movie because it does jump around so much from so many different things. And it sets up all these really big concepts of ghost town, of this, of that, of of witches, of werewolves, and I never really felt like it had a solid grounding of what any of its any of its rules were, or even just like a solid grounding of what the premise was. Because well, at one point, yeah. the mayor, um, who's an actor I typically like in in small roles, Chris Parnell. Yeah. There you go. That's the dude. Uh, at one point, uh, part way through the movie, he says, "I'm sorry, but all hauntings are banned." And I still don't know what he meant by that statement. What is a yeah. haunting in the in the context of this movie? Because it's not like the it's not like he's saying the ghosts are banned from like interacting with everyone else or they're they're off the streets or whatever. Because they're still ghosts out and about for the rest of the movie. They're, they're, like, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> Hauntings are yeah. banned. What uh, does that mean? Explain it to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about the ghosts for a second. Because um, mm -hmm. first of all, it starts off with like this huge like exposition dump about like how you know this place has like the most hauntings or whatever and all the hauntings are set up in this one part of town but they never like explain like why it has the most hauntings or like uh you know throughout the movie they never actually give you any insight as to how the ghost exists how they operate like how they operate and stuff like i never got any sense of like what their limitations are, what their powers, like, do they function as regular people? Like, you know, do they, you know, like, how do they interact with the world? Like, all you really do is you mostly see them standing in the background. And then, like, at key moments, sometimes you'll have one will say something, like, for a joke. But you have, like, you know, it sets up as this huge thing, but then there's no actual, like, thought put into how it operates or how it would operate if it was, like, you know, happening in the real world. It just really frustrated me. And, like, <laughs> this, this is a... Uh, I don't know if you call it a trope because I don't think it happens like super often. But I really, when I was watching this, I was thinking like, I as much as I love like you know ghosts and monsters and demons and all that stuff, I don't like when people try to make a story uh, about them as like being like commonplace. Like I like when they're you know supposed to be like a monster and something you're scared of or you're you know gonna run away from and then. You know, other no, people don't know what believe you or whatever. I know what you're meaning here, because when they start talking about, oh, they think the killer's a werewolf, it's just, everyone's just kind of like, oh yeah, the werewolf. Is that, is that, like, oh, werewolves are normal. Yeah. Like, everyone knows that werewolves are around. Yeah. And, like, and, and there is ways that you can do that, like, that, you know, it, it's interesting, um, you know, but, like, <sighs> when it gets to the point when it's, like, uh, and I feel like it happens, like, a lot with zombies or something, like, they always like to try to be like a, a you know comedy about like well this is just what it's like you know when uh when your neighbor's a zombie or something like 
uh, I don't know. Like, I just, it's not funny to me. And it, it just, like, takes everything away that's, like, what actually makes, like, monsters and, and stuff interesting. And I, again, exploring. you can almost see what it wanted to do at some point. Because after, after they start talking about the werewolf, ZZ Beats character says something like, wait, aren't, like, werewolves vicious and awful creatures who kill people? And then the other guy goes, hey, that's a stereotype. That's offensive. And I'm like, okay, there's something you could do with that. You could do with, like, werewolves and like, other horror, like, you know, creatures and, you know, yeah. races to substitute and to talk about things like racism and whatever, right? You, you could do something with that. And that would be very much a satire comedy, right? That wouldn't be, like, a serious <laughs> horror movie version of, oh, scary werewolves. And that would be okay. The problem is, is the movie then does absolutely nothing with that after that point. It never, it never yeah. brings it up again. It was just one line. <laughs> and then it's yeah, gone. And, it, and like most of our characters aren't like you know these actual creatures and like you know like the creatures are all the minor characters so you never really get you know except for the werewolf is the biggest one but you don't even see him like being a werewolf like he's basically just a normal guy for like 95 percent of the movie so it doesn't really feel like you know they're making everything like commonplace and normal but it still doesn't really feel that way because none of the characters we're following are that way yeah, no, that's that's true. It, I just I never get a real sense of what the rules of the world were in terms of like yeah. how integrated the society are werewolves and ghosts and and you know whatever like it. And most of all, though, my biggest problem is other than the fact that the plot is a jumbled mess where it doesn't feel like it builds up to it. You know, when there's a reveal of like who the true villain is in, in the the movie, I'm like. Oh, okay, like I just kind of shrugged. I didn't care. It was didn't matter. There was no build up to it. There was no reason to care. Is honestly my other big problem is that it's just painfully unfunny. Like the the scene mm. where I got really worried early on because the opening scene where the first piece of boy gets killed is it's whatever. It's fine. I guess I guess he's throw it slit. It's you know whatever. Uh, but it's the scene with the detectives coming to uh, the crime scene, and one of them is kind of an idiot, and the other one's like the gruff detective who keeps telling him to shut up because he keeps saying stupid things. And every single line of dialogue was painful. Every single one. Yeah. And I'm like, who wrote this? This is this is awful. And this, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't want to you know be too harsh, but this really felt like a um, like a first draft script. Like I like I feel like you know, especially with comedy, like you really need to like you know punch it up. Like this felt like just the like the guy wrote it like the first time through and it was just like all right let's film it like yeah no need to try to like you know add jokes or you know maybe like you rewrite some stuff or improv on set like everything just felt like oh is that like your first go around like is that really what you're gonna go with yeah there was a weird pacing problem to it as well and i, I don't know if this is i mean obviously the direction is not great because it's not a well-directed movie at all but I, yeah. I don't know if the pacing of the jokes is purely the direction purely the jokes themselves but there was lots of weird like, it was almost like it wanted to do, like, that awkward, like, realistic humor where there's, like, awkward silences after the, the weird lines. And it felt like, I don't know, like, uh, the scene where the werewolf first meets uh, ZZ Beat's character, right? And the, the, he's just kind of, like, you know, trying to be casual with her. And every line's kind of a, a sort of slight joke. And it there, there was just all these pauses after every line where it was, like, I, don't, I feel like this would maybe be punchier if you just edit, edit the, the gaps down and make it th 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 flow oh, yeah. quicker. And it's, and I, 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 and obviously there's comedy where you want the pauses. You want, you know, if you watch The Office, the, the, half the comedy on that show is let the awkwardness sink in after something's said. Whereas here, it's not actually that awkward what they're saying in and of itself. They they make it awkward by pausing after it, and it feels weird. It yeah. feels unnatural. Like they don't know how to pace a scene properly. Uh, which on it, and this is going to be really insulting to an extent but <laughs> it felt like a shouldn't filmmaker who didn't know how to like edit down a scene or how to like direct the actors to the oh, right no. pace oh I, yeah i agree a thousand percent like yeah th there's definitely something off where yeah it, it really didn't feel like you're watching a like professionally made movie and like yeah. it almost like it kind of weirdly felt like you know the better actors in the movie like zz beats and stuff like it, it felt like they could not wait to like get out of the movie because it seems like they would like be on their scene and then they're gone and you wouldn't see them in a for like a long stretch of yeah, time to the, the point where thing. like oh yeah i forgot that i i really thought connect this that she was the main character and it kind of sets up yeah. at the start that she's going to be because she's the one out for revenge and she's going to investigate but then she disappears for like long stretches of time uh, well that, that's a, that's another problem too is honestly like 
if I were to ask you who the main character is, could you like confidently answer that question? No, I couldn't. And like... it, and obviously, <laughs> there are some movie plots that work when it's an ensemble and it is everything's kind of equal. Oh, yeah. But it, this really needed an anchor. This could be. And I think in this case, because it's such a weird world, it doesn't play by our rules. It plays by this weird own, you know, fantasy horror world rules. We need an anchor. We need someone who is at the center that kind of draws us in. And we follow them, and they're our baseline for everything. We have no baseline in this movie. You, you can do the ensemble in a in like a serious gritty drama because everything like no no it's it's our world, it's our rules. Everything makes sense to us anyway by nature. So we don't need the baseline in the same way because the baseline is just what we're used to. But here we need someone to anchor the whole thing down and like make us feel like there's like a just j- just like some sort of center point, some sort of center rule that everything else revolves around. And because there isn't that, everything just kind of feels like it's been thrown out there and kind of, okay, I guess that yeah, this thing can happen in this movie and this thing it's, can happen. <laughs> sure. It's like they just throw a bunch of characters and plot out there and they just hope one kind of ends up being compelling enough that, you know, it, it'll make keep you uh, interested. But it, I, again, there's like nothing really feels like it has that much weight or point to it. And like stuff happens where it's just like, like I think, um, like yeah, no spoilers, but like yeah, when we get to the end of the movie, you kind of find out like who's been killing people and like what they're after and stuff. It just uh, actually, I think you kind of mentioned it earlier, but at that point, you just don't care because you're not really invested with the characters, and it's not really something that you've been like following all the way through that you're really interested in. It's just like, oh, okay, we're going you know this way now, all right? Yeah, I... the, yeah, the ending's just so lackluster and. Ultimately, doesn't really amount to much. Like, if you if you're building up to the if, if if part of the core of the movie is that the werewolves, who's not really the killer, right? I don't think that's a spoiler because the, the movie clearly says at the start everyone thinks he's the killer. Therefore, he's he's definitely not. It's someone else. But ultimately, he's going to decide to be a bit of a hero and help fight whoever is the bad guy. And I'm like, okay, I can see the the plot potential there. You have this like gruff like loner who decides to be the hero by the end. But like, you can do that. But the final confrontation where everyone's kind of involved is over so quick it's so lackluster you could really feel the budget here i think the the, the budget was felt the most in the last act and not that it ever needed to be a big budget movie like part of the charm from the trailer was that it did look a low budget movie where someone just had some fun ideas but i don't, I don't know this was um it's funny i feel like i'm hating it more now that we're talking about it i as i was watching it it was just thoroughly in this really mediocre none of this is really working range as opposed to being outright you know, the boy garbage. Oh, come on. <laughs> you, you don't even, you're delirious. You know what you're saying? <laughs> well, I would like, I would legitimately argue about that. Like, I, I'm assuming that you're kind of joking, but I think the boy, at least, you know, even if you don't like it, has a coherent, like, plot and direction. Like, mm-hmm. it's not all over the place like this, which is just an absolute I, mess. I, in terms of a script, sure. I, I think I I at least like some of the IDs in this more than I like the, the general Dude, idea right. of the boy, you know? You, know, you got you gotta let go Honestly, if they didn't <laughs> have the synth music, like there wouldn't be anything you like about this movie. Just because they add a little bit of synth music does not mean they not have that. an idea of something they're going for. <laughs> I think they're just not, doing not. that because they're specifically trying to capitalize on things like Stranger Things. I don't even think it was like a general I like I I feel attacked with that statement. <laughs> again, I'm talking about the tone that it's shooting for. Again, it's missing the mark. It really is. I don't is. think it's shooting for a tone though. It I is think shooting you're, like, for a tone. It way too much credit. What is the tone it's shooting for? <laughs> it, it like sh- honestly, because I don't it, think it's. I, don't, I think you're giving it way too much like credit that it was trying to do something because I, no, I think it's, it had it's no failing, idea what it was doing. Tim, it's failing miserably at it, but it is shooting for something. It's shooting. It's shooting what is for it, what is it? vamp. It's shooting for vamp's tone. Think of vamp. Okay. That's what it's trying to be. It's trying to be that tone. I don't think so. I think I think they honestly they're not <laughs> they weren't actually shooting for something. They were trying to just do stuff that was popular. So yeah, we're gonna throw in like you know some stuff that's just like you know synth music and I feel like they're well, trying to do at this point, like, Tim, the... At this point, what we're arguing here then? The argument here though is become <laughs> you're saying that they're they're corporate. Ed- Cor- corporate soulless people who have picked things out of a hat that are popular 
And I'm saying that they are hopeless romantics and love the genre. They're just incompetent and can't do it. Which one is worse or better is is up for debate. <laughs> but that's essentially what we're is, arguing I, here right now. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that they, you know, I, I do think they are probably someone who likes horror movies and they like cheesy things, but I don't think that they, I, I didn't, I don't want to give them enough credit to think that they actually thought enough about this movie that they were trying to uh, achieve something. Well, I, no, but that's the thing. I'm not saying they thought, but I'm not, this is what I'm saying. They didn't give it enough. Like, they just assumed they could do it. They assumed it was easy. Oh, sure. When, yeah. I, when I say they, they were shooting for something, I, I, I just mean in their head, this is what they thought they were going to end up with. They're like, oh, no, I want to recreate the tone of that and this and that. And I want to put it in there with the synth and I want to put it in there with the, the, the lighthearted killings and jokes and stuff like that and the, the attitude. Um, and instead... You're way too easy to impress. <laughs> what part of this sounds impressed? <laughs> what you're saying, like... It- you're acting like the movie, yeah, it's not that bad because the people that made it might like good movies. <laughs> what did I say that? What did I say? It's not that bad. <laughs> you, That's what you, it sounds like you're getting at. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I am saying that I am saying that someone wanted to make a certain type of movie but was unbelievably incompetent of how to actually achieve said movie. What part of that sounds impressed? <laughs> <laughs> well, it it sounds like you're saying that like, oh yeah, it's not a good movie, but you got to give them credit because you know they did. I'm not giving them credit. I'm not movie. giving them credit. I'm just saying what I think the the, the thought thought process was. <laughs> Uva Bull may want to make a good movie, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to give him credit for it when he turns out that piece of shit. Hey, hey, <laughs> you, you, you like. Tommy Wiseau wanted to make a great movie with The Room. He thought he was doing like an and auteur's work. I mean, yeah, he made it so bad that it was hilarious. This never hits that, unfortunately. This is just boring and unfunny. But... Yeah. Like, I, I do wonder, though, like, if they were trying to go for... Like, at points, it seems like maybe they were trying to do stuff that was, like, so bad or stupid that it might be funny. But then also, you know, at times it seems like they were trying to do stuff that, like, oh, no, this is, like, legitimately, like, cool or whatever. And, you know, like like you said, like, the the other, like, they were trying to do, like, the, you know, kind of awkward humor of the office at points. Um, But I feel like they were also trying to do, like, um, I don't know what you call it, but, like, uh, like, like some stuff kind of felt like the, the really over-the-top silly, like, uh, like, Tim and Eric kind of humor. But, again, none of it ever actually lands. It is... You know, painfully unfunny. You've got and those two I... things. I think you've got a little bit of like wanting to be Ghostbusters esque in there with the mix of comedy I and can the see that. lighthearted yeah. horror, and then I think you've got a mix of, like I say, stuff like Vamp, a little bit of Stranger Things. Not not much because not kids or anything like that, but just just in the sense of the 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 small town. And I think it's supposed to be the eighties. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I well, she uses a computer at one point right that's true you know you're right yeah there's a computer yeah. it just has a very 80s feel to it it's not actually in these yeah. yeah to think to, no, I, I agree to, they definitely were probably trying to go for some of that with but honestly though like i wonder if like part of that was just like hey what do people like now like you know stranger things all right that's big let's do something like that you know i think the reason why I, i'm not jumping to the, the corporate like oh let's just do what people like thing is it's because it's an indie movie and I feel like indie movies, if they, if they tend to be bad, it's because they were just bad at making the movie, as opposed to a big corporate movie where it was just, oh, let's get people in a room and what do people like? This think piece this out. This, this <laughs> committee, designed by committee. Yeah. This, Joe, it's funny, Tim. I was worried you wouldn't like this. I, I was worried coming out of this review that I really didn't like this and you were going to be trying to defend it. Because I, th- I thought the humour oh, might no. work for you. <laughs> After Dude Bro Party Massacre 3, I really thought this <laughs> might be something that clicked with you in a weird way no i mean i do like really like silly stupid stuff <laughs> like a, a lot of times like i'll admit oh, that, but like <laughs> but but even when um like i don't like you know sometimes people like laugh at stuff that they're like oh my god that's so random like i like it like i don't i, I don't like stuff that like even if you're weird or random or whatever, there's still a way to do it well <laughs> and a way to do it bad and mm-hmm. this movie does it bad <laughs> and i think maybe it also might offend me more that like you know 
if this was just some whatever run of the mill, you know, um, movie that we've seen a bunch before, that's fine. But the fact that it is trying to take things that I like, and um, and again, it has like a lot of like you know uh, people in it that I like, like um, the guy that owns a pizza place, Paul Shear, he's a very very funny uh you know sketch and improv mm-hmm. guy and i usually like you know almost anything that he's in and then um you know hannibal burris is a really funny stand-up comedian he's like one of my favorites and he's in the beginning for like maybe two minutes i don't know if you remember he's one of the guys that worked at the diner if you remember the diner <laughs> scene that has nothing to do with the movie um but the main oh, character yeah. works at a diner for like two seconds. <laughs> the diner, yeah, that's right. I never came back. I, like, see, when they introduced that at the start of the movie, I thought that was going to be like the, 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 one of the locations they keep going back to to like meet each other and stuff. And instead, yeah. they just they would never see it again. But it, it's also like, you know, uh, Astrid, she's working at the diner. And then, you know, once she finds out about the murders, she goes, she starts working at the pizza place again. But uh, again, it's another one of those things where it's like, all right, so first of all, all the diner stuff was so extremely pointless. Uh, second of all, like we never learned anything about like what her history with the pizza place was. Like we know that she was going out with that guy, but it's also like, all right, so why is she working there anymore? And like, why are they just like, yeah, it felt like so there was okay maybe, to have her back. Like, yeah, it felt like there was maybe a backstory there that maybe get cut out of the movie, or maybe they never wrote the backstory. It was just kind of is what and, it like, was. I, <laughs> I'm not saying I want this because, you know, good lord, I wouldn't watch it, but like, you definitely it, want it to. probably would have been, <laughs> it probably would have been better if it was like a eight to 10 episode Netflix show or something, because then you could actually, you know, flesh out these characters. And, you know, I, I think that format would work a little better that you would ha- can have like intersecting storylines. But, so uh, tell, as tell a, me your review of this movie is it wasn't long enough. I need, I need 10 hours of it instead of just hey, 90 I'm minutes. Saying, I, <laughs> I still don't watch it because it would be horrible, but at least it would probably make sense. <laughs> and, like, you know, you probably get a feel for the characters. Either that or they'd add so many more ideas to account for all the extra episodes that it would just be even more insane by the That's end. That's true. And not in a good way. Not That's in a way true. that it's... It, not in, like, a bad movie, like, fun way where it's like, oh, my God, this is insane, like, what it's doing here. It's just yeah. in a... Oh, it's just adding more things to the pot and not really doing anything with them. Yeah. And, uh... All right, so one other thing I got to complain about uh, is I absolutely hated, like, the way everything looked. Like, half the time I couldn't even tell when people were supposed to be ghosts because they basically just kind of look like people. <laughs> like, oh, so you're, t- yeah, like, you're not talking about the visuals of the movie. You're talking about the design of things in the movie. I, I would say the, the visuals of the movie, I think, are very bland. Like, there's nothing yeah, interesting fair. about them. Um, but then the actual like uh, design of the monsters, I think, are really shitty. Like, I mean, the... you basically only see like. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say that. But, well, like, I was. Yeah, but like, I was, I was like... you're gonna, I'll let you finish your point, and then I'll jump in. Okay. Yeah. It will, it will basically, you only like really see like you know the ghosts, and then you see a werewolf like a little bit at the end, and they both look pretty horrible. Yeah, because the visuals aren't bad. The visuals are just kind of like I feel like the, the cinematographer uh, was fine, and that's that's what maybe separates us from like stuff that's even worse is that. On a technical yeah. quality, the, the, the technical people behind the camera are doing a fine job. Like it looks like a proper movie. Sure. Um, it's the it's the direction and the way the actors are directed. And it's not that the actors are bad per se. We've seen a lot of these actors pop up in a lot of things. They're fine actors. Yeah. Um, this this is purely the script and the direction that's that's letting them down. Um, and not, not, it's, uh, uh, it's not that. I, I agree with the, the ghost thing because I, I was actually because you see, you see the first ghost in the opening scene. Before we're actually explained, it's explained to us that the ghost town exists and that ghosts are just a part of this world and everyone knows about them and they still order pizza and they still need to eat, I guess, because they're ordering pizza. Um, I mean, it, I, I couldn't tell you because this movie is not about answering questions. <laughs> no. That's the thing, though. I don't even think it's about, like, like posing questions either. They just kind of naturally occur because they didn't think anything through. Yeah, like you, like I guess maybe they just want you to go along in the ride, or or maybe they're like, oh, well, you know, the ghosts aren't really important, but it's like, but then why are you trying to make them important? Why is that the opening of your movie is talking about the ghosts? Like, why are people talking about like the ghost town murders? Like, you know, it, it, it's it frustrates me because yeah, yeah it doesn't it, feel like it raises questions, but yeah, if you simplify, just make it like oh, someone's killing. Because I, I actually think the basic premise, if you just, if you told me the premise of a movie's. Oh, someone's killing delivery drivers around the city. 
someone has to figure out the crime and there's maybe like something supernatural going on at the end of it i could see a movie with with like a sort of uh tone again and the tone that it's going for not the tone that it necessarily achieves um working in that vein but keep it simpler I, honestly I, I think one of the biggest problems is kind of what the reveal is and like the fact that there's this other third party involved and it's all this extra stuff um and then the motives of that third party are just kind of weird and because in fact at one point when the characters have kind of figured out like who's behind it all they say oh they want to do this for themselves uh, motive unknown we don't know why they want to do it and then it's never actually brought up at the end of the movie why they actually want to do the whole plan they have and by the time we get to that point like i don't know what it was maybe like 40 45 50 minutes in or whatever mm-hmm. and uh, like i could i could not have cared less like i like you know i i i had some promise you know in the beginning just because you know I'm intrigued about what it is and hmm. what it's going to be but then it's yeah, it just constantly like goes down and down and down to the point where yeah, by the end when you are finally learning stuff, I just I could not care at all. I hated it so much. I think I was worried that I was going to have to be the negative one on this, <laughs> and instead Tim get angry with me and shouted at me for thinking that I was defending <laughs> it a little bit too much. <laughs> Which was not the case. Those of you at home who can comprehend. Simple statements will understand where what I was trying to say. Yeah, you, you know, it's just uh, when you bring up the boy, it makes my it makes my blood boil. I gotta stand up for my little guy. Ah, uh, you and Bram, you and Bram, <laughs> yeah, Brams. There you go. You, you, and, you and that idiot, Brams. Jesus. All right. Uh, spoilers, I guess. Spoilers yeah. for Slice. <laughs> Um, do, do you know what's funny? Just, just, I mean, this is still technically spoiler free, but we're just spoilers now anyway, just for, for the record. But I, I, it, this one hurts a bit more than some of the other shitty movies we watch because I was actually looking forward to it. I thought it was going to be good. Whereas, you know, like, it's, it's, not, a ter- oh, I agree. it's not terrible that, that Truth or Dare turns out to suck because I always expected that to suck. Like, I was expecting that to be garbage. Yeah. And it was. And, and I, yeah, and, and actually, I can have, like, some fun with that because at least. You know, that movie, you can kind of make fun of it because it's trying to take it so seriously and it's like, you know, so bad and stuff, but it's, you can't really have fun when someone is trying to be funny and it's not. No. No. Um, there, there is like a, 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 it's a very hard to hit concoction. It's not something you can do intentionally as any, anyone who's tried to intentionally make a bad movie has failed miserably at, but there is a yeah. weird concoction where you can try to be funny and it's so unfunny that it somehow flips again and becomes funny. But that's very hard sure, to do. It's sure. one in a million. It's one in a million. That's like that's, that's the lightning in a yeah. ball. It's that is hard to capture. You, and, you, and again, it's not intentional. You just stumble into it, you know, with with yeah. no sense. Anyway, so the other thing that this movie does that annoys me is uh, not only is it not trying to be funny, but I felt like it was trying to be cool. Like you know, there's a lot of uh-huh. stuff where. Characters are walking in slow motion. They're putting their jackets on, which, to be fair, it does look cool and stuff. But then it's just immediately followed by like a scene where it's like, I don't understand why these characters well, are acting this way. The, the first scene that you bring up about the the, the, the that makes me I think of when you say that, I thought it was fine because it was early on in the movie. This is like you know after Beats has found out that her boyfriend died, who worked at the pizza place, and she goes in and gives him this speech about, oh, we need to go out there and work. And I thought it was kind of funny how the all the pizza delivery people all left at the exact same time like a fleet of cars like you have to wait for orders to come in it's not like y'all go out like you're in war yeah. you, you, that's not how pizza delivery <laughs> well, works but I, like but the, the, the montage of them all like her suiting up and putting the jacket on as the music was playing, I was like I was kind of still into yeah. it at that point because I was like okay it's early enough this is setting up the premise of the movie and let's see what they're going to do um and you know her investigating seems like it's a fine you know thread to, and again I'm still thinking she's the main character at this point it wasn't until after this where the movie really lost me and there was more stuff like that. But at this point, it was fine. This this felt in tone with what it was trying to do at this point. If that makes sense. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I agree. Uh, there is, like, a weird thing with it where, uh, like, it felt like the food delivery people in this town, like, were, like, you know, a lot more important <laughs> than, like, you know, it, than they are in reality for some reason. Like, it seemed like, you know, they kept trying to make like a, a big deal about them and i don't know if it was just like 
See, I was you actually... I, obviously, it just kind of threw it away as the movie went on. I was kind of okay with that as an idea. Like, early on, when she comes in and gives a speech, like, oh, we have to go out there and do this for, for Justin, for the guy who died. We have to go out and do, do this for him. This is important. We have to go out and deliver pizzas. I kind of, like, if that was going to be the central sort of, like, joke of the movie, is that they treat this as if it's, like, as important as, like, saving lives. Like, no, you, you're you basically an ambulance driver because you deliver pizzas. Like, if you really treat it like that, like there's honour in delivering pizzas, I can see the, you know, the, the absurd humour that may come from that in treating the job important. Like, but if you're going to do that, I'd say go even further with it and say that, no, 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 their actual crisis, their actual thing they're trying to do in the movie is just deliver pizzas whilst under the threat of being killed off. Like, just do that. Just make that the yep. movie and the premise. So, so, well, where to begin? So, the, 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 the hate group, or the other hate group, the, the alleged human rights group or ghost rights group or whatever they are, turn out to be the villains. They're the witches that are trying to manipulate oh, no. public opinion against the ghosts so they can take ghost town, so they can open portals to hell for some reason. And, and why do they have to kill the pizza boys to do that? Because that'll make everyone think the ghosts are responsible, so therefore everyone hates ghosts. Okay. But who... Well, why... Why does it matter if people hate ghosts if the gates of hell are open? Because... And I'm, I'm not... I, it feels like maybe I'm trying to, like, grill you or something, but I'm honestly... Like, I'm asking these questions because, like, I just feel like this movie is so poorly thought out that it's like... Did they have an idea Look, of what they were doing? I don't have an answer for you, right? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to tell you what the movie's given me, and that's as best as I got. Like, see, everything feels like it's supposed to be important. Like, that feels like a big, huge thing, but instead of, you know, revealing it in the movie and being like, oh my god, I'm shocked that they went there. Instead, it's just like, okay, so why do I care about this? Same thing with, like, a, you have the werewolf character, who feels like he's supposed to be this big character, and it's supposed to mean something when, like, you know, he's uh, trying to get away and then he kind of like comes back and decides to help. But again, it's like, I have, I just have no context or idea of who this character is or what they're going for that everything just falls flat when it feels like he's supposed to have a big hero moment or a big final showdown. It's yeah, like, but basically, yeah, I don't give a shit. They, they put the one or two big moments that are supposed to be the the pinnacle of the character, but they forgot to put in everything else that actually makes those moments yeah. matter or mean anything. <laughs> That's basically what they did. I, yeah, it's, it's weird. The, the two cops are really unfunny. Um, for some reason, the cop who's been convinced it's the werewolf the whole movie shows up and, like, helps at the end and gives him a nod like he figured it out. Like, no, no, you're really a good guy. Yeah. And I'm like, how? When, 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 when did he have this arc where he, like, realized this? What, what, what convinced them of this? Well, well, he used to hate werewolves because a werewolf ran over his, uh, his mother, I think he said. Yes. Uh, which... Like, like okay, I see where the joke is. Like that could kind of be like a funny idea because it's like, oh, like a werewolf killed my, you know, mother or whatever, and it's like, oh, like how did like how that happens? Like, well, he ran her over or whatever. It's like, oh, I get it, but a bump. But like, again, like this dude, you know, his the character is not great, and there's no like timing with it, whatever. That even jokes like that that maybe could have been okay just seem like they really fall flat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me let me ask you this: Did you have any like running jokes <laughs> that you hated the most, or anything? <laughs> I'll I'll give you I I have two examples. Um, so they have the the ghost guy that works at the pizza place. Oh yeah, and kind of oh, like yeah. the big joke is he always goes on these big prophetic monologues that someone always interrupts him and is like, "Hey, yeah, we don't care." Blah blah blah, like. That's again, like I see where the idea of that is kind of funny, but there's just like no like panache to the way it's like you know directed or shot, and like the uh, you know, kind of like you said before, like with the pacing and the timing, like it it, it feels more awkward when it's like you know, they're done talking, and it's like always yeah, feels like I, there's a beat, and then a character reacts. I feel, I feel like the joke here works better. I, again, I, I can actually compare this to some other stuff. I, I see. Not that anyone likes to bring up um, Louis C.K. anymore, but his character on Parks and Rec, right? He was a cop, and the joke with his character on that show was that everything he said sounded like a policeman making a statement at a press conference about a case, right? Sure. Everything, every, the way he phrased everything sounded like that. And that was really funny. And I feel like what you do with this ghost character, if you want him, like, give him that tone, but just have him talk about everything yeah. like that and make that the joke. 
Instead, he just goes on about this, you know, the gates of hell shall open and we must all yeah. look into our souls to keep it as... And then there was one joke where he, like, or one speech at the end of it where he says, where, where the whole point was, oh, don't forget the, 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 the breadsticks that someone ordered. And I'm like, okay, right, I oh, see right, yeah. why that was, that was supposed to be kind of the, what they were doing there. But it was more of a, just like a tacked on punchline as opposed to... No, just have him talk about like, the pizza and making a pizza as if he's talking about like protecting the earth. Do that. That could be yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like and you just never really see him doing anything else. Like I, I assumed he was like the one making the pizzas, but like you know, it'd probably be more funny if you know he's saying this while he's like you know flipping a pizza or something or like cutting it, you know, and then he just looks up and says that or. You know, like maybe characters have that reaction with like, "Oh, shouldn't you be working or something?" Or yeah. like, also, you know, like like something like that. But later on, uh, you know, uh, Shiro's character who runs the place when they're thinking they're having to shut down because all the delivery drivers have been killed, uh, the ghost is like, "Hey, hey, we should do this. We should do that to try and protect the earth. We have to protect this place because there's, like, there's the the hell mouths underneath it, just like the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer." Uh, but he implies in that scene that. But hey, us us living humans have to pay taxes, and I'm like, well, why is the ghost working then? At yeah, all? Why does he have a job? Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I I don't get it. And uh, again, you know, mentioned this before, but just the they just they look so uninspired. Like they look more like zombies you know, than they do ghosts. Because it was got pale yeah. skin. It looks kind of like slightly dead. <laughs> Yeah, like, why not make him, like, a, like, you know, some, like, 18th century ghost, you know, that's, like, all, like, you know, super fancy, uh, but is wearing, like, a, you know, like, apron or something, like, you know, that might be interesting, or, um, or, you know, I don't know, like, a, like, a, something from, like, the, the ring or something, like, really, like, creepy or scary, but they're doing mundane things, like, something like that would be interesting, but, yeah, like, a lot of times I couldn't tell the ghosts at first because they just look kind of pale with maybe, like, a little bit of dark under their eyes or something. Yeah, um, this goes back to you saying everything feels like it's trying to be cool. I kind of I kinda got that from a lot of the sense of humor. To go back to that running joke mm-hmm. about him always saying, you know, we're on the gates of hell, blah, 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 everyone has to do something. When they go down to the basement and they, they find the ghost janitor, and there's the stupid joke where the janitor didn't know he was dead, and he sees the skeleton, he's like, ah, shit balls, I've been dead this whole time. The, the, the moment that I'm, I'm bringing up, though, to sort of make my point here is that when Shear's character says, wait, we're on a gates of hell, and then the ghost says, I've literally been saying that. It's like, no, oh, you haven't, dude. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's, this, it's very sort of like bro humor almost, the, the way they kind of yeah. phrase things, the, the way they kind of like, like go, oh, shut up, dude, and, or, or whatever. Like, it, it has that kind of tone. Yeah. It's, it's the same, because Zizi Beats gets killed. The witch kills her, and... She gets up and then looks down at her body and goes, shit, I'm dead? That sucks. And hmm. and I'm like, I could see how that could be funny. I could see it, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's it's definitely not. Uh, and yeah, I, I do, I can see what you're saying with that, yeah, kind of bro humor, especially with um, maybe my most hated character in oh, the movie, I don't but the... Do, do, that's, that's, uh, do you like, know what this guy reminded me of? This is the other driver who's always like, He's very bro humor. He's also always talking about his girlfriend that's much older than him. Mm. And he's always making like sex references about, you know, going to have sex with her and stuff. He reminded me of the character in uh, The Final Girls who's meant to be the cliched 80s jock. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what yeah. um, me and Melissa said. Like, uh, that's Adam Devine. And we we're like, oh, this guy reminds us a lot of Adam Devine. And you can yeah. tell he was going for that. But yeah, it definitely doesn't pull it off. And I- I'm not the biggest fan of adam divine but i can kind of see that he like i, I can kind of see I, I think he's at least more charming than like this guy like mm. I, i'm not crazy about him but i think he can pull off what he's trying to do like this guy just seems like a poor imitation and again it's another thing where you know his joke is that you know he keeps being very blunt and keeps talking about my much older girlfriend that i want to go have sex with but like, all right, if you're gonna keep doing that, at least give us some type of payoff where she shows up later. Oh and, yeah, we never like, meet her. We actually never yeah. see this older yeah. girl because I, I thought the joke was going to be she was a ghost and she's like 400 years old That's or what I thought. something like that. Yeah. yeah, and no, we never see her. And because here's the thing, the reason why that works in the final girls is because a, I, th- I do think Divine's more charismatic and how he pulls it off. And yeah. secondly, of so- course, this is the big thing is that it's supposed to be a satire of this type of character, and the other regular characters yeah. who are in the movie go hey, this dude's inappropriate and stupid and weird and, un- and not funny at all. 
It's how they react to him where the humor comes from, as opposed to just like you know. But even then, he has a couple of funny lines. You know, there's a, there's a scene uh, in, in that movie where he comes in and it's like, it's meant to be the scene for the horror movie where he's de- you know he's he's deflowering the the, the lead you know actress yeah. and he's like, I'm a I'm a thief. I steal cherries, <laughs> and it's like it's so over the top, and like it, it knows that it's it's the, the 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 most stupid line ever. But he he nails that line. He really puts his heart and soul yeah. into it. Yeah, and then the, another example of just like man, just not having any like follow through with jokes and stuff is uh like one thing that I did kind of laugh at was um I forget like someone says something, and uh, I think it's Paul Shear's character, and he goes like, "Hey, like you know." that's a stereotype like put a dollar in the stereotype jar i thought like oh, okay that's kind of funny like you know because you've heard of like swear jars but like mm. you know stereotype jar and it's like okay but then like you know it, like it, i feel like if you're gonna do that joke then like show like a jar full of money on the counter and like you know someone like you know just throwing like a dollar in or something like it, like everything feels like it doesn't have any type of follow through or again just like a little thing like that could have made it like just like a smidge you know sure, funnier that- that almost feels to me like the line was thought of on the day, if not by the actor, then the director or the writer said, hey, add this line in. And it was like, oh, we don't have a jar to show. It's fine, we'll just have the line. And, it, like, you <laughs> yeah, know, it, it, I it, can see that. It yeah. was basically the attitude of, oh, that'll do. Yeah. That, that'll <laughs> I, I do. Right? That. I get a lot of that in this movie. We'll just represent things with this, or we'll just reference them without actually showing them. Yeah. And if you do that enough, it starts to feel like the movie just kind of avoiding everything. And it kind of feels that way by the time you get to the end. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then, uh, yeah, and uh, again, stuff like, um, you know, we didn't really talk about it, uh, his character because I guess he doesn't really have one. But uh, you know, Steve Harrington from Stranger Things, like, it feels like he's supposed to be doing something in this movie, but he like it, it, it's like so like he he has nothing to do. It disappears for like so much of the movie that oh, it seems like he's weird that he's even in it. Yeah, he's basically a cameo. He he. He he is introduced at the start with the reporter uh, as the photographer, and it impl- and it introduces Ooh. him like he's going to be a main character with her, right? Um, or at least to the level where the you know the camera guy in Scream, like you know like with with Courtney yeah, Cox, okay, like, yeah, yeah. at least to that level where he's going to be around with her like repeatedly throughout the movie. Mm. And instead, he never really comes out with her again after that. We just see him in the office at one point. He's drinking coffee and he said, "Hey, other guys are on this job. We're going to cover the sports, even though she's his boss." But that's whatever. <laughs> yeah. and it's like, and then, like eh. i yeah and i like yeah he he barely is in the movie at all and uh and again like you know he's front and center in that trailer because uh you know oh, again, no, i'll give I, you I this one like... i'll give you this one yeah. he's in that trailer prominently because of stranger things because that's how they sell yeah, this without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, no question like i i honestly if it wasn't for the cast i wonder if this movie would have even been like put out at all like it seems like uh like I, I think this might have been made like a few years ago because I think there was like a, I, I watched the credits and I think it said like 2016 on it or something. That that wouldn't shock and, me. I feel like it would have been put out. It, it would have absolutely been put out, but we would never have known about it. This would have been one of those movies yeah. where I would have seen it like on on the you know the release list or whatever or on on the the streaming services you know wherever it would have popped up, and I'd have been like that looks like you know direct to video sub you know f list tier shite we're not going to do that yeah. um but because of the cast and because of pr- and to be you know what to be fair the people who made that trailer the trailer's pretty solid i'll give them points yeah. they sold me on this movie <laughs> yeah um so because of the trailer and because of some of the cast being actually kind of notable people um we were like yeah yeah we'll watch this I'm looking forward yeah. to it even and mm-hmm. unfortunately it just yeah. ended up being kind of a because uh, because the uh, poor character again feels like she's supposed to be important but ultimately, I, she never really, I don't like, know, she never helps anyone. No one ever works together. That is, everything just kind of comes together at the end and, and, and this big confrontation and nothing seems to really matter all that much. Yeah, no, like, it, and you always feel like people are about to come together, but they never really do. Like when, uh, you know, Astrid comes back to the pizza place, you kind of feel like, all right, like, here it is now, here's our team. But then, yeah, like you said, they immediately all just go off, like, in separate directions <laughs> delivering pizza. Yeah, or she's like, going to... They she, never meet up again. I, I think the, the obvious outcome is you're expecting the werewolf, Astrid, and the reporter to eventually be the trio who team up to take on the, mm-hmm. the, the, the threat. And they never really do. Ast- Astrid and the werewolf kind of talk about as if they're going to, and he doesn't want to. And that sort of sets up his big heroic return towards the end. But, like, 
you know, the reporter barely meets them, and the one scene she has with the werewolf dude, he, you know, like, the joke there is basically that he's already, she's already figured out everything that he knows, so the scene actually gives us no information at all, it's, it's just the joke of, he tries to tell her something, like, oh, and this, yeah, you're talking about this, this is, who's behind it, this is why they're doing it, at least as far as we know, because that was the scene where they brought up, oh, the witches want this land to do something with, yet on, as of yet unknown. But it's still unknown at the end of the movie, Un- unless we're just going with the yeah. generic, oh, they want to open the gate of hell and just unleash he- chaos in the world. Okay. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah. So he, we see his wolf form at the end, and it's the most lackluster, like, semi-wolfman yes. crap okay. ever. He's basically got Wolverine yeah. sideburns and some, like, you know, fangs and claws, mm-hmm. and that's about it. Yeah. But, I don't know, it, again, he's supposed to be, like, you know, all badass and stuff because he's having, like, this fight scene stuff, and it just it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, and the fight scene basically amounts to the witch, like, holding out, like, her hand, and there's light coming from it. It's, it's really uninventive in terms of any sort of choreography or, or action scene set piece. And Not that I'm expecting, like, a big-budget movie-level thing, but you can do interesting sure. things with some tricks. You can. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, ZZ Beats just kind of gets held in a like a, a beam of light for all, most of the fight so she's kind of mm. useless and the whole thing is kind of odd i thought the transition because you see him transform back it just kind of fades to him becoming human again it's just like a fade but it happens so quick that he's almost like walking out of the frame before the effect is finished making him be human <laughs> again and it felt like a really bad mistake it felt like oh shit the shot wasn't as long as it was supposed to be <laughs> but we can get another take we, we didn't notice until we brought it back to the edit suite and chance the rapper's too yeah. busy to come back and shoot more of it because he knows this movie's shite so we just have to that kind sounds of about right. <laughs> we, we just have to accept the fact that he's already he's already halfway out of the shot when he, he, he turns back into a human oh jesus christ <sighs> yeah jesus i don't <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say man like this this like we, Obviously, there have been other movies that are like, you know, been kind of upsetting, haven't really lived up to what we hope, but I feel like this is the first time in a while where I was like angry, like after I watched this. Uh, you know, I think another one is that, you know, the young Heather, uh, her name is, who works at the pizza place, okay. tur- turns out to be in cahoots with the witches. She's one of the witches. And that's like a thing that's, you know, we, we, we get a tease early on. She phones someone, tells them what, what's going on. Like she's, she's given someone information. And then later on, it turns out she's the new witch. And then at the end, like, the only sort of payoff we get to it is that she tries to pretend that she was being held captive. And, then, like, someone says, no, 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 she was one of them, arrest her. And that's it. Like, it feels like, again, it was pointless. There was nothing that actually, they didn't use it in the story to do anything with it, to to build tension, to make us hate her. She was, like, manipulating things from behind or, you know, there was nothing like that. There was, there was no use in the story that made it worthwhile. Everything just get kind of gets thrown out there without actually having a purpose in the story to to create anything, to create tension, to create drama, to create comedy, to create like you know the the, the point of seeing a movie where things are happening and you care because it's creating a feeling or an emotion of some kind of some description. <laughs> Instead, it feels like a lot of concepts are just kind of existing because they thought they'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. All right. Are we, are we ready to rate this? Is there anything else you want to get off your chest, Timmy? <sighs> Jesus, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> I think that's it, but... I, I'm, I'm sure there's other stuff that annoyed me. I just can't even really care. There was, like, a whole weird, like, I guess... Like, it was supposed to be, like, heroin kind of thing, where, like... Uh, these food delivery people are also drug dealers, but like, oh, just the one goes nowhere. It was, it was just the one guy at the start, but yeah, he, he's delivering. But, like... uh, but oh. well, but there's the scene though where like they all like like all like the food delivery people meet and like I don't look like a some like abandoned building or something, and they have oh, that sure, like, drug dealer come out. What what I meant was it's, it's no there's no one else at the pizza place. It's like you know there's like one person oh, sure, sure. from okay. different you know like yeah. you know like one one guy from the Italian place, maybe one guy from yeah. you know like it's just, like all different people, but. The drug dealer's called Cheese, and he, he calls his, his heroin Cheese. And that's like a big thing where they arrest Cheese. Because that's another thing where I thought, oh, they're making a big introduction of this Cheese character because he's going to be important later on in the movie. After his interrogation scene, which is the scene immediately after his introduction scene, you never see him again. <laughs> he's introduced, uh, ZZ Beats like, faces off with him and tries to stab him, and then the police arrest him. 
they interrogate him about who maybe the killer was, and then we just never see him again. That's it. He's gone. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it feels like they have so many weird things like that where it's like, why was this important? Like, I don't know. Maybe they wanted to have, like, an actual mystery, so they're throwing stuff, like, in, in there to, you know, try to keep you guessing as to what's going on, but it, it's just felt like it's just handled so poorly and so unimportant that you just could not give a shit. Yep, that, that about sums it up. Um, so many things are introduced and then don't actually become anything. And so many things that were supposed to feel became something just didn't feel set up properly enough. That weren't given the time to actually make them feel like... So, whatever, right, I think we're done. Uh, <laughs> that's <No>. Slice. <laughs> what are you rating it, Timmy, out of, out of 10? Out of 10 uh... pieces of Slices? <laughs> it's not enough slices for me. Um, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I think uh, I think I'll give it uh, a one point for um, maybe just like a maybe like a, a few ideas and some stuff like you know the music, uh, which you know when was there was like all right this is kind of cool and then one point for the cast but i, I can't go higher than that two that's... You're two out of ten <laughs> two, i, I yeah. can't go quite that low i technically it's not it's not bad enough i think to go below that because like we're, we're getting down to twos and ones i'm at rob zombies halloween i'm at, i'm at like you know uh what was that kevin bacon film from a couple of years ago that we hated the, the, <laughs> the, the darkness the darkness that was it like yeah. <laughs> that, we're down at that level. It's not quite down there. It, it this is more like a like a forty me. I don't know. Like honestly, like if I'm thinking about other movies, like other bad movies we watch this year, year, like you brought up Truth or Dare, which was like pretty painful. But like if I had a gun to my head, I would watch that over this because at least that, you know, like at least that could tell like a coherent story at least uh you know you spend time with characters and get to know them as dumb as the characters are like this to me <laughs> was so all over the place and such a mess honestly i can't like i, I can't think about anything that i liked it like i that, 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 that's you know fair. I, mean? I, I think it just didn't make me as angry as it made you <laughs> i agree I, obviously i've, I've gotten yeah. deep, deep into it it's, it's not it's, it's a bad movie but it didn't make me as angry as it made you i i, I think um I'm not angry. I'm disappointed, right? That, that's yeah. that's where See, I'm at. <laughs> See, I, I think that's kind of. I think we're flip flopping a little bit because I think that's kind of what I ultimately came down with. Uh, with the nun, where I was like, okay, you sure. Know, uh, yeah. Go what? Go watch our review of that because we get into it. But like, you know, that was a not a good movie. But when I left, I wasn't angry about it. But I felt like bummed out. Like this, I was like angry when I finished watching it. Yeah. And, uh, and and maybe it's because of like you know the potential stuff like uh, again like man this is a great cast like like how many people would kill to have you know like these people uh, in a movie like you know like uh, they're great and stuff and you know and, and again just you know the premise and uh, like you know um, full disclosure I actually it you know it's vastly different <laughs> than this but uh, I wrote a like a goat man comic that you know involves uh, you know delivery uh, pizza delivery boys. Of course are, you did. Like, you know, of course be... that was the central <laughs> premise to an issue of goat man. <laughs> but yeah, like you know, uh, that was like a script I wrote where like yeah they're getting killed and stuff. But uh, you know, I'll put my money where my mouth is. I'll say that that's a much better <laughs> script than this movie. Uh, but you know, I I, I like pizza. I like the, uh, you know that idea and stuff, and this does nothing with it. Me. Do you know what? I'm looking at that Superman towel or whatever it is you've got hanging in the, the background there. Yeah. And all, and all I can think of is that they should make pizza where the slices just have the, the corners cut off so they look like a Superman logo. So all the slices are like okay. Superman emblem shaped. I'd, I'd eat that for sure. Could you arrange the cheese so that it actually makes the logo? That takes some artistry. Well, I, what I would say is. Uh, don't do that with the cheese, because uh, mm. you know, get the cheese kind of like a yellowish color, and then uh, arrange it with a pepperoni to kind of spell out the S. I think uh, okay, that'd okay. be good. I'm going to one up you. I'm going to say not pepperoni because I'm bored of pepper because pepperoni's on like so many pizzas. Use bolognese sure. and just draw out the S with the bolognese. Oh, fancy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fancy Superman pizza. I'm down. I'm down. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I guess yeah, I guess I'm going with a four. I'm, I'm not. I, I do feel like. Maybe I should go like a 3.5. But I mean, we're averaging at like a 3. I feel like that's a good Screams After Midnight yeah. score. 
to yeah. <laughs> to to average on at the end of this. Um, but clearly we don't recommend it. Like, you know, I'm not recommending no. the, the 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 damn thing. It it's bad, right? It's bad people. Uh, waste your time on yeah. other things, less bad things, or yeah. more even more bad things because then they're, they're funny bad. This is this is not that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would gladly take. Um, you know, I, I don't want to spoil any of the you know stuff we got coming up for October, but we did some pretty mm. good like you know bad movies there, and I would oh, take yeah. those like any day of the week. You know, compared to uh, this movie. Oh yes. Uh, so that that has been this episode of Screams After Midnight. And Tim just did just say the magic word. He said October because we're almost in October. Uh, this episode's going up pretty soon, as is the next one we're recording. This is actually the final night we're recording before October because Tim's going off and getting married. So he's away for a couple of weeks. Uh, he'll be back in about the third week of October and we'll start doing some new stuff then. But we have banked a lot of episodes for the October thon because what we do every October is we do a bunch of extra episodes. We have something in the region of four movies a week, if not more, depending on like because usually we'll plan for four a week and then during october and this may happen less this year because tim's getting married but tim will be like hey, hey let's do another movie <laughs> i want to do another one or oh, watch this thing let's do one on this <laughs> and that happens quite a bit I, during I think, october yeah i think i put more planning into uh recording all these october episodes than i did the actual wedding you say that as if that's 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 weird or shouldn't have been the case. I feel like that's that's exactly what should have what should have happened. But here's the thing, Tim. I'm fairly certain you spent a lot more money on the wedding <laughs> than you did on these episodes of after midnight. True. So you don't have to get yourself custom Castlevania shoes for this. Fair. That's, that's it. True. I feel like a, a custom, I don't know, the boy hat or something might be Ooh, I'd wear that. on the cards for the show. <laughs> Uh, get a little <laughs> Brahms face on there and just be like, yeah, yeah. I'm repping Brahms this so week. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, cool. That's the word you'd be. As, uh, but yeah, so that's coming up in October, the October thon. We have a bunch of episodes coming. We've got all that cool stuff lined up and ready to go. Uh, so you can look forward to that. And then, yeah. And if uh, and if people want to do their own October thon, I think you just uh, release a spreadsheet on the Facebook group. People can yes, um, um, follow along with that. Yeah, I've not actually put the spreadsheets out yet. Usually I put a Google Doc up so people can uh, try and do some marathons and get points and stuff. Um, I've not put that out yet, but I did put a screenshot of it out just so people could see what the bonuses were. Because you get okay. bonuses. Um, if you watch five movies from like, the same decade, you get a bonus for that decade. If you watch five movies from the same subgenre, you get a bonus for that subgenre. Uh, and so on and so on. It's just an excuse to watch as many movies as possible. That's just basically yeah. what it is. Uh, and funnily enough, most of our October movies don't count for it this year because we did them all in advance. But I mean, that's just yeah. <laughs> as because it worked twice as hard in October. Um, but yeah, so so another thing that, of course, every month are patrons. So if you go to patreon.com slash TV, you get to support the show, the channel, everything we do here and keep the reviews coming. Um, and and one day we can we can spend more time doing reviews because we, we don't need money from anything else. That's, that's, the, that's, that's the hope, of course. <laughs> that's the hope. Um and you know poor, poor tim can can get a slice of pizza uh occasionally well, on patreon i don't know if you saw the news <laughs> well, i don't know oh. if you saw the news but i guess uh amy schumer is getting uh paid a million dollars to start her own podcast so i don't know maybe if we can try to get Jeez. you know <laughs> something along those lines <laughs> oh, that'd be this. great yeah uh, if, if a million people <laughs> want to give us a dollar each per month i'd be a-okay with that um <laughs> Let's be honest, if a million people wanted to give us a cent a month, that'd probably work out as a, yeah. a reasonable amount. So well, I don't like I don't want to sound greedy though. Like I'd be okay with five hundred thousand or something like that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're you know? not greedy. Five hundred thousand is fine. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I mean that's like what, two hundred grand for each of us and then Matt and Connor yeah. can get like five each. So they don't need a lot. Yeah. Or fifty each. <laughs> They'll uh <laughs> I'll, you know. Well, like, uh, we'll send them a fruit basket once a year. Fruit basket, yeah, there you go. There yeah, you go. there you go. Colour screams is where the most of the money goes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the point I was getting at is that obviously one of the things that our patrons get to do, if, if, uh, away from the joking shilling, is that they get to vote every month. Uh, the $5 tier, they get to vote in a movie once a month. For October, during the month of September, the voting that's up for October, there's three votes that are up. There's uh, two Patreon votes. There's usually one, but there's two for October, and then there's a third vote, which is open to everyone. So if you check a link in the description below on YouTube, or in the audio podcast version, there'll be a link to the, the Google voting sheet. 
uh, for the, the free public vote, which is uh, all horror anthologies, and everyone can vote on that. So you get a taste of the voting, uh, no matter who you are. Uh, uh, but patrons, of course, get the other two votes as well, one of which is uh, classic Universal Monster movies, and the other one is what we're calling franchise stars, and that's like uh, Hellraiser, Children of the Corn, Puppet Master and Leprechaun, and whatever one wins, we'll do the first movie in October, and then we'll continue the franchise uh, over the, the next year or so. I thought you were going to say, whatever one wins, we lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not true. There's three of these that I... Well, no, nah, there's two of these that I'd be excited to do, and two that I'm not so excited to do. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Now, that's not to say that I'm expecting all the sequels and the two that I'm excited to do to be good, but there's at least enough that I know I like to be like, oh, yeah, I want to do at least a few of those. Um, So... Yeah. I think you'll be happy with Leprechaun. That is worst case scenario. I want to put that out there right now. That that is DEFCON five, <laughs> right? That is worst case scenario, or is DEFCON one worst case scenario? I, I never, I'm not sure how DEFCONs work. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> like, like, is it, does it go up? Is like, you know, two is worse than one, then three is worse, or is it like we go up to one? Is like five is the lowest, and then when we get to one, that's like okay, possible nuclear war. <laughs> Very good question. I, I can't I remember. Fill us no in. <laughs> what, what is what is the the rules with Death Defcon uh, situation ratings? Let us know yeah. uh, in the comments. There should there should be a horror movie called Deathcon. That'd be fun. Oh, Deathcon. Oh, I like that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Deathcon. Deathcon one. Deathcon five. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. You you just you start with one because, because then sequels, the sequels. Yeah. yeah, you just keep going up. Deathcon <laughs> numbers. That's perfect. <laughs> It's gold. All right, no one can do that because we just uh, yeah we, we just it. just just copyrighted it. Yes, yes. Can't call your movie Defcon. We we've, we've coined that phrase. That is, that is copyright screams after midnight. Mail fuzz TV incorporated. Uh, so no. Um, so yeah, check out Patreon. Uh, let us know what you thought of the movie if you've seen it in the comments. Uh, all the usual stuff. Guys on Twitter at screams midnight. Uh, I don't have the thing ready to come up because I have to reinstall Windows, so not all my little bells and whistles aren't set up. But at screams midnight is the screams after midnight Twitter. Uh, you can get the mailed fuzz twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for just channel updates for everything but if you just like the horror stuff you just like screams you can go to the, the screams after midnight twitter at screams midnight uh, i'm at wibble 89 tim's at tim Vergulish. uh rate the podcast on the itunes your podcast app highly please that helps us out a lot um because you know, obviously as much as we like to shell patreon there's lots of other ways you support us and help us and that's just watching the stuff liking it commenting sharing us out on twitter all those things they all help uh, but that is that is us. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. We went over an hour on Slice. I am shocked <laughs> and appalled at that. Uh, but that is us. So thank you once again for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep watching scary movies. Goodbye.